Okay, so we are almost done with the clumping part. So what I want to do now is create another net box around the grass card itself. So we'll just call this uh, grass card. And then let's just uh, collapse both these guys. All right, so you can probably see how nicely this wraps up function functionality for you. All right, just keeps your graphs nice and clean, keeps your sanity, you know, because you can get quite lost in some of uh, these Houdini networks. And so I, I tend to try to stay as organized as possible. Plus, it also helps other people um, to understand what you're doing uh, with your networks. Okay, so let's go and actually get these all uh, bent. So I want them to bend based off of their current uh, density value over here. Okay, so we know we have a point here. All right, we know that this particular point here has a density value that goes from zero to one. All right, so as we get to zero, I want to have it bend a little bit more. And as we get to one, I want it to be a little bit more straight. Okay, so let's drop down a, a bend node here. And we're going to wire it in right after we do our UV transform. Oh, and inside of the UV transform here. So instead of dividing it by four, I multiplied it by 0.25 because if we just take the width of our texture, I just wanted to note this. All right, so if this is zero and this is one, we divide it by four, we get 0.25. And so to make our UVs, you know, exactly perfect, uh, we need to make sure that our card cross section line is also 0 0.25. And that basically makes a perfect fit. So if I were to come back in here, you can see that all of our UV shells now fit perfectly in line. If I were to turn on single pass here, you can see that we're getting that perfectly. So awesome. So we're getting, you know, our UVs automatically selecting a spot on the uh, UV shell. Cool. So let's focus on the, the bend now. So I just want to basically put this guy in there. All right. So let's just take a look at what we get when we bend, you know, a certain angle and it's, it's not doing anything right yet because we need to set up a couple parameters first. All right. So our capture direction is going to be one. Okay. We need to make sure that our, it's just sitting directly. All right. In the Y direction. And we need our up vector to be set to something like um, X or Z. So I'm actually going to do the Z direction. So you can use these little lines to determine where it's going to bend. So now if I were to bend this, you can see that we're bending the grass blade accordingly. All right. So everything's working out perfectly for us. So if I were to leave that just not, you know, a static value, you can see that we're starting to get, you know, a nice little grass clump. Pretty sweet. All right. And we can go in and, you know, adjust our global um, transform. And that was actually in the other one. This is why we make HDAs. Uh, so we don't have to search around for stuff. So we can, you know, make different types of grass clumps now. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm going to keep it kind of tight for right now. I'm just, I just like the look, you know, um, and it, again, another reason why we're going to make an HDA out of this. So basically when we come and just use this particular node, all these properties will be up here. So we won't ever have to dive into the node again. Cool. All right. So let's jump back in and just get this finished up. So what I want to do, I mean, you could leave it like that, that, you know, it's totally fine. Um, or what we can do is we can pull off uh, the information. I really just want to show how to do this because understanding how to grab data from other nodes, you know, without them necessarily being hooked up to each other is a very uh, crucial uh, component in understanding Houdini. All right. This allows you and kind of frees you up uh, in terms of being able to create really complex systems. And, you know, while this grass clump might seem simple, there's a lot of stuff that goes into it. So I, that's why I really wanted to make this little mini course uh, because I thought it would be a good exercise and, you know, making a real game asset. So let's take care of this bend. So what we want to do is I want to basically get the current um, density value. All right. So to do that, all we need to do is say point. So we're going to use the point function and we need to tell it what, which node we want to grab that point information from. And in this case, we want that copy attributes node. All right. So this guy right here. Okay, so I want to get the information from that node. All right. And the attribute that I'm interested in is called density. So we type that in and I want the first component. Cool. Okay. So 
and I also need to set a point number. So you notice uh, if we mouse over this, let's actually do that and pull up our help information by hitting F1 on the keyboard. You can see that the point expression function takes a surface node that where we want to get the information. It needs a point number where we want to get the information from. It wants the name of the attribute and then the index of that attribute. So what I need to do is put in zero for this right here. There we go. All right, so you can see now we're getting very, very subtle bend. A bend of 0.2 isn't going to do us anything. So what I want to do is I want to fit this now. So I want to say fit 0, 1. You, you can probably start to see how often this fit function comes into, into play. So I want to say fit 0, 1 and <clears throat> our minimum value. So when we're at 0, I want the bend to be something like, let's say, 40. And when we get more towards 1, let's do something like 15. All right, so we're fitting all that information. So there we go. So let's go even more. Let's do something like point nine, or let's do something like ninety. And there we go. And then let's do something like one, just for the middle. So now we actually have control over the spread. All right, we can we can promote these to our HDA once we get to that particular uh, section. So this just gives you another level of control over your grass clumps. All right. So you might notice that we also have this. These little orange tips, while it looks pretty cool, uh, we can control that in the texture, so we don't necessarily need that. And that's really just coming from this visualized falloff inside the bend node. So I'm going to turn that off, and that gives us a better look at what our uh, grass clump is starting to look like. All right, so pretty cool stuff. All right, we can even go and randomize all this. Um, so if we just do, do a randomize, well, you know, this might actually kind of mess it up a little bit, but we don't want it to be so perfect. Yeah, so it just messes it up a little bit. We have to do a little bit more work to uh, randomize the bend. Uh, I'm going to leave it just how I had it before, just for this particular uh, course, and I'll let you uh, mess around with different ways of randomizing those particular values. All right, so with that, we now have our grass clump all done. Okay, so I'm just going to leave this guy inside of a, a net box, but I'll leave this, you know, exposed because this is kind of the, the main or final network in our thing. So this is just going to be our uh, for loop, like so. And there we go. So in the next uh, couple of videos, what we want to do is we want to get this particular grass clump now exported out to Unity, but I also want to include all the LODs for it. All right, so we're going to go through and cover that process. Thanks so much.